Okay, for so this uh, quick tip here, we're going to be talking about reciprocals. These are great because if you can understand this simple concept, it'll help you answer a few questions that tend to be pretty confusing. So let me just go over real quick what a, a reciprocal is, and then we'll kind of talk about how it pertains to ultrasound physics. Uh, basically, a reciprocal is any number that's multiplied by another number, and that equals 1. You know, so if you do the, if you actually do the math, these things will cancel out and they're going to equal 1. If you look at just a fraction, you can see you multiply across and you'll get 1. The way we tend to see it is if we have one value, let's say like our pulse repetition period, is going to be equal to 1 over our pulse repetition frequency. The way I like to write these formulas is just like this. You have your one value that equals one over the other value and these are only pertaining to anything that's in a reciprocal relationship. I'll give you a link that has a list of all of them as well as those that have a direct relationship with, which would be this equals this. So the reason I like to write them this way let me clear the screen here and I'll show you kinda as soon as I get into my exam write down your your formula and just leave it there until you get a question. And like the question, let's uh, for example say, it would say, if the PRP of the ultrasound machine is increased, what happens to the pulse repetition frequency? All I have to do now is just draw some arrows. Uh, the question is asking if this increases, what happens to this? Well, since they're in a reciprocal relationship, they have an inverse relationship. So if this one's going up, this one's going to be going down. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to know any algebra, math, advanced calculus. All you have to know is with this little one up here, that's going to cause these two to be opposite. If uh, same thing, if the pulse repetition period goes down, the frequency is going to have to increase for this equation to stay the same. Another uh, example that I like to use is the, the frequency of the machine, or the transducer, is equal to 1 over penetration. I like this one because it's fairly easy to actually logically think this one out. Let's say, for example, we're going to be um, imaging a thyroid gland. Do you need a lot of penetration? No, so technically our penetration is going to be down because we only need to go you know, a couple centimeters underneath the skin. What's going to happen to our frequency to be able to image, you know, well with a low penetration? Well, our frequency is going to go up. You know, we're going to go from, let's say, uh, you know, 3.5. We're not going to use that to, to image a thyroid gland. We'll probably actually increase the frequency and go up to, you know, maybe a 10 megahertz transducer or even a 12 You know, so if the if the frequency goes up, that's going to cause our penetration to go down. But the whole reason you do that is because our resolution will increase, which is what we want. So let's say you have a patient. You know, you have your frequency and your penetration. Let's say you have a patient that's you know fairly generous in size. You need to penetrate twenty centimeters. So we're going to need our penetration to go up. So what's going to happen to our frequency? Well, we have to drop that frequency. You know, we may be using a 3.5 megahertz transducer, but it, on the machine, we'll probably even drop that down to a 2.5. You know, so as we see, as the frequency goes down, the penetration goes up. So anytime we have an equation that we can write this way, this value, if it increases, this value is going to decrease, and as well as vice versa. So I'll put a link right here that's going to show you a list of all the formulas that you're going to need that will have a reciprocal relationship and on that same page I do include some that have a direct relationship as well.